So Surat al-Najm, Surat al-Najm, it actually starts Wan-Najmi Ida Hawa, by the, the stars that fall. Your friend was surely that is the Prophet Sallallahu He was not whatsoever in delusion and definitely he was not off in some kind of psychosis that is, or even in some kind of being astray. He does not speak of himself and surely he does not speak of his own desire. It is in fact a revelation from the Lord Almighty given to him by Jibreel, the one that taught him was actually a very mighty angel. He's actually, he's actually a, a mighty angel, a mighty angel in where he is actually one of the mightiest and one of the most beautiful angels when he was actually in the horizon both together, that is, during the day of al isra al Mi'raj, when he appeared closer and closer, and he was so close that they were as close as a bow and arrow of how close a bow and arrow is with, its, with, it, with the main thing that shoots with it. And then the Lord Almighty had given to his servants the revelation of as much as he had given him, that is, in order to indicate that there's actually a revelation even on that day of Al Isra. The heart, the mind was surely not lying and not in any sort of a delusion. And he was not lying about what he had seen. Are you going to debate and, de and debate him and argue with him on what he had seen when? He had actually seen Jibreel once again. He had seen him and seen the Lord Almighty near a place near Jannah called Sidrat al Muntaha. There was actually the Jannah. The Jannah that is going to be the final destination for all. And from that, from that, Idiyarsha Sidrata Mayarsha, he was really close to it. The sight was surely not in any type of a delusion or in type of blur, but in, or, and also, it was not in any type of a transgression or in any type of a delusion. As a matter of fact, he had seen some of the strongest signs of his Lord Almighty. Now, it actually wanted to bring in an argument do you see illat wal uzza? Do you see the two, the two, um, the, the two idols that you worship? That is the the Arab, the pagan Arab. Illat is one is one um, uh, idol, and al uzza is another idol, and the third one is manat. The third one, or manat the third, the other. Alakum al zakar wa lahu al untha. In other words. This is the, the whole, this is one of the arguments. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, listen to this. This is not something that is different from today. It really is following the same pattern. So the pagan Arabs, they wanted to claim that Illat wal Uzza were actually some pious people that somehow replicated piety and principle. And therefore they were really to bring them closer to God. They didn't believe that they were necessarily God, but they were worshiping them because they regarded that these things were so were so uh, were so much of holiness that they had the power of God residing in them. So Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is telling them, "Well, these these idols that you had claimed were God. Why did you attribute uh, you attribute to them that it was basically that it was basically uh, something?" that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would have as females versus you had claimed for yourself keeping the males for you. In other words, it was like saying that the good things you keep for yourself and the bad things you keep for your Lord Almighty. Is this how you praise your Lord Almighty? And this is not to say that, yeah, they should have attributed the boys to God. No, this is not whatsoever that argument. The argument is to say that if you wanted to claim that you were in any how or in any way obedient to the Lord Almighty, well, by your standard, 
while you why are you using based on your standard attributing something that is supposed to be of a less or less uh, let's say inferior let's say something that is inferior attributing it to god is this based on your standard not the standards of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but based on your standard that is is this how you praise the lord almighty you basically attribute the daughters to god but attribute the sons to yourself based on your standard this is surely a, st a standard where you yourself are we're go using that argument against you and then you could see that it is not fair judgment on the lord almighty what is that supposed to be coming into this area in here illa asma un antum wa abaikum this is actually one very main area in understanding all philosophy not only the pagans not only is it arguing with the pagans but this is also arguing with a lot of the different philosophies forever to come that they're just names and logos that you had actually claimed you and your ancestors and the different people that had actually made the argument and claimed the argument the Lord Almighty did not whatsoever reveal this or give any power or any in any evidence to prove such a claim. What do they follow? They just follow speculation, their own desires, and now their Lord Almighty had sent them the guidance. But, or is it that people are the ones that, based on their desire, they basically consider that their desires are the standard to set the standard that we would base right and wrong on it doesn't go like that neither does the world neither does the world function based on what you desire in the end your lord almighty everything your lord almighty he actually owns the last and the beginning what does that mean? When we actually speak about purpose, purpose is not based on what you desire. And purpose is not based on what you would put in speculation. And is definitely not based on how you want the purpose to be. The purpose is really created by Allah Almighty because he created the beginning and the end. Since he created the beginning and he created the end, therefore he created the purpose that holds the beginning and the end together. Therefore, purpose actually preceded the beginning and the end. And therefore, purpose is not to be based on names that we might consider is principle or even what our ancestors or the society might consider as the principle or even what we would want the principle to be like in the end in fact even how many angels this is speaking about even the angels even their intercession would would not be of any worth unless the lord almighty had accepted it and willed it that it would actually pass and those that wanted to claim that those that want that believe, don't believe in judgment day they would name the angels names of females because they wanted to attribute to attribute them to the lord almighty in the end again they don't have any knowledge of it in other words this is not about the pagan arab only but this is also when we're speaking about morality and when we're speaking about anything in life, they don't really have knowledge of it. They have speculation. They just have certain, they'll call it studies. They can call it whatever they want, but be sure that if it contradicts what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had revealed, they're just following theory, speculation, and theory and speculation does not whatsoever stand strong evidence to fight over or to overcome truth. Now, 
Theme number two, now that you had recognized what it means to know truth and what it means to stand on a, on a basis to learn and be able to distinguish truth from falsehood, now, in terms of your relationship with people, turn your back, leave, go away, far away from those that turn away from the remembrance of the Lord Almighty. What does that mean? Only be friends with those that are always concerned about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's dhikr. If they are far away from dhikr, find someone else. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling you, A'rib. turn your back, go to someone else. Because if they are away from dhikr, they are away from the, the orbit of Allah Almighty, then their vision is away from Allah Almighty. Then their behavior is, all, is away from Allah Almighty. And surely their purpose, their spirituality, their sincerity, and the way they relate with you is based on, is based on interest and benefit. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling you, then leave those that had actually left the remembrance of the Lord Almighty. And why? Because because their only concern is really about this life, this low life, because that's all they're focused on. That's all they know about life. Because if they don't have a vision of akhirah, because the ayah before that actually said, the purpose is to be created by Allah Almighty, and it actually preceded the akhirah, and preceded the ula, preceded the dunya. Then, if somebody does not have their orbit on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and their orbit is not the akhirah, then all they're concerned about is just the hayat dunya because that's going to be all that they know about life. It's just dunya. <inaudible> Your Lord Almighty knows who really is deluded and who really is far away from the path of his, uh, from his path, and he is the one that knows who is guided. In other words, what? This is basically telling you, if you want to see if this person is away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's remembrance, don't look at their tongue, look at their vision, look at their behavior, and look at these two and combine them. What kind of a lifestyle are they living? This is in order to help you. In other words, the standard you want to judge people based on is the Lord Almighty. Inna Rabbaka huwa a'lam biman dalla an sabil. Wa huwa a'lam biman ihtada. Your Lord Almighty and eventually is the one that knows who is guided and who is misguided. In the end, wa lillahi ma fi samawati wa ma fi al-ar. The Lord Almighty, he controls the heavens and the earth in order. And the reason why the heavens and the earth were created were really semicolon, were really in order to hold the people accountable. In other words, to be tested in order to reward, to reward or to punish those that have transgressed the limit and to reward for those that have committed or that for those that have done righteousness with husna, which is Jannah. The, who are those? They're basically the people that would avoid major sin, would avoid sin in general, would avoid the minor sin, and would avoid the smallest and the smallest of sin. Your Lord Almighty is very vast in his forgiveness, for he knows, in other words, when he's actually talking about right here about sin, he's telling you, well, he knows. He created for you from earth, and he created you when you were just embryos in your, your, your mother's wombs. So don't whatsoever praise yourselves. He knows who really is holding on to their deen and their iman. But for those people that turn away and that would give and barely give, 
they would claim, of course, that they're, it's a, this is, there's actually a sabab nuzul here. So let's just leave it, leave it um, from here, inshallah. And that's the part that I wanted to do tafsir for. Um, all right. So let's go ahead with Surah Al-Qamar. Let's go ahead um, with uh, Surah Al-Qamar, inshallah. And you, Fatuma, my daughter wants to read Surah Al-Qamar. Go ahead. Mr. <laughs> Muhtoyina ila da'a Yaqulu al-kafiruna Hatha 